All right, my lovers, how you doing? Yes, behind me, got this lovely little rib, belongs to Rob. He's taking us out today, going to some new spots. We're going mudlarking, which means looking for anything old and interesting. Can't wait to get out there on the river. Let's get some luck in the muck. Can't believe it. It's Queen Victoria, how you doing, Mum? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are getting ready for another expedition on our Firefly and today we've got a slightly more powerful motor. Yeah, forget electric. <laughs> you said electric's the future last time. It is for some things, but some things <laughs> have to just depend on the old age. Are we on full speed? Yeah. <laughs> So we're just getting the uh, boat into the river and uh, Rob forgot a very important part. Uh, a little bung goes in the back, let the water out. Uh, yeah, he forgot to put it in, so luckily we spotted it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what not just... the first, not the last. What'd you do, Rob? Got the bung. <laughs> Strengthen me with tails and pork pies. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Well, I've got my detector today, so I can at least run over this while we're waiting to see even more for sure. But nice little button. Yeah, we can definitely have a little scrape around here. Bits of pottery. Second find. First find, little pot there, a little pot, pot, pot. Hmm. Oh man, how cool is he? Mm. A little horsey with no head. That's what them frozen dolls were. Oh, yeah, it's just got a uh, made in China. Oh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Probably Min's dynasty. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> quite an industrial area, so uh, we might find quite a lot of tools and bits and bobs. Oh, my God, Rob, it's called lunch already. How did, you, did you just dive in and get that with your teeth? <laughs> That's quite realistic, isn't it? Yeah. We should put him in like a little place, something like this. Oh, place. Oh, I didn't even mean that. We'll put him in there and then maybe if we ever come back, he'll be waiting for us. There you go, look. Oh, Ford badge. It's been mangled somehow. 
Now, where did I put my trowel? Hmm. <laughs> my, new tickling, my new tickling device, Rob. Oh, no. <laughs> <Edward Scissorhand. laughs> A piece of a uh, filed metal. Oh, bloody hell, Rob. Thought you found a proper gun then? Well, it's not a 45, but. Take out the trash. <laughs> That's a nice piece of glass, look. Oh yeah. Oh, I like that. That's beautiful. Obviously, it's a piece of slag waste. It's got some beautiful colours in there, though. And bubbles. Completely accidental, but it looks absolutely beautiful. Well guys, doing a bit of detecting with the old Nox and uh, just dug this up, only about an inch down but I'm yet to see what it is, so let's clean it together Feels like it could be silver Hopefully it's not a modern coin Oh, there's some detail Oh, yeah, what are you? Or is it a button? Oh, it looks alright oh, I think it might be a worn silver coin Oh no, there's something on there. Oh, that looks like it might be a George. Oh, it's coming off quite nicely. The uh, silver does actually, doesn't crud up as much as copper. So very often you can just use your finger now and get the worst of it off. It's enough to ID it. What's this then? Oh, do I think it could be a Roman? No, it can't be. Don't recognise that one. Britannia. Yeah, it looks like it's a George. Probably a George Schilling or George, I don't know. Oh, brilliant, what a great find. There you go, you can see a bit of the profile there. I'm not gonna clean that top off just in case I pull the detail off. So I'm gonna clean it when I get home. Stick around for the cleanup, guys. Or maybe I'll show you now, depending on how the video goes. <laughs> sometimes I'll show you halfway through, sometimes I'll show you at the end. But yeah, that's a lovely little coin. Beautiful. That's for being clever, so I don't take it over your eyes because you'll lose it. Got it, here it is. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Having cleaned the coin of its stubborn crud, it revealed some very interesting features. The face of King George III doesn't look quite right, and Britannia certainly doesn't. So I believe this coin to be a contemporary forgery of a King George III farthing dating to 1771 to 1775. It looks like the forger has filled in part of the king's features. And on the Britannia side, she would normally have a Union Jack shield, but this seems to be missing and she seems to have a very bendy arm. It is also horrendously off struck. So I suspect someone has engraved their own dies, closely matching the original farthing and did a poor job of punching them. In the past, I've discovered similar coins called evasion tokens. This is where unscrupulous people would make coins that look just like the real ones, but change the text from Georgius Rex to something like George Rules, for example, so that if caught, they could plead that they were just making tokens and would avoid punishment. But this one is a straight up forgery. If you got caught making this, then you would have faced the death penalty. And in 1748, a coiner, as they were known back then, called John Dudd, was sentenced for high treason and was hung, drawn and quartered. But his fate didn't stop this coin being produced by someone a few years later in London's underworld. Well, just out there is about a three inch high spike. It could have been quite damaging if we'd gone over it, but it also could be an anchor. We might just be a shard of nothing, but as the tide goes out, we'll keep an eye on it. See where it turns out to be. There's a bit of a bit of a weight coming now. Oh, is it just? I think it's just a spike. And down. Oh yeah, just a shard. It did it like an anchor for a second, though. Well, Rob's getting some luck in the muck. Let's go and see what he's had. Oh, that's a nice one. You were just saying there was no pipes here. Well done. Did you say you found a coin as well? No. Oh. Not yet. You said 1919, or was that 
Uh, 19, so. Oh, sorry, mate. I thought you said coin, but you said pipe. Beautiful. Yeah, the uh, design of the metal surfboard never really took off. See that, Rob? Yeah, yeah. Man, you can have that as my gift to you. Unless it's got an amazing piece of like stamped, I don't know. Cool. That's a lovely little uh, ink well though, ink pot. Beautiful. Oh yeah, it's got a stamp on it and all. That's nice. A bit nibbled, but That's all right. shows it's got character and age. Yeah. It's a nice little find. Yeah, and cheaper than petrol. <laughs> What's the mark say then? Uh, oh, love that, love that not, knots. Yeah, that's a nice little, uh, nice little linky, that. Lovely. There we go. Chew the brick alert. Nice. These really do get everywhere, didn't they? Well, not that everywhere, but... Whoa, listen to that. Whoa. And... Uh, that's a big old plane. Took my ears off. <clears throat> I like that. Crude little Tudor brick. Excellent. That is really, really wonky. So it's a great spot for plane spotting, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's there. <laughs> That's a great spot. What's that? I don't know. Knox Emma. Hmm, obviously a, it's the base of a bottle, yeah, so that's yeah. this is the underside of it, but yeah. it could be Knox, does sound a bit harsh, could be some sort of chemical, yeah, we'll have to look into that, that's Chemist. nice, I love the embossing on it though, yeah, it's nice, fresh, yeah. I'm just pick that up, I don't know if it's uh Found a bit of a gearbox. Coin shapes, have you? Yeah, back there. Gear case. Uh, boom hole fit in. Hmm. And that's off a boat. So we're talking this is a boat yard. Boat Must yard. be a brass, that. Yeah. You should put it in your new boat as like a kind of lucky, a radiator fit in. A lucky charm. Yeah, we've got plenty of junk down here, guys. That's basically what Rob's trying to tell us. <laughs> uh, but we've got to look amongst the junk and see the treasures. I'm sure there's a spoon around here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, I'm going out yonder. Okay, be brave. Don't sink. I'll try not to. A little, little pot. I found quite a few of these on the foreshore. In toothpaste or powder. I want the lid though. This is the kingdom of rust. Look at it all. There's all sorts of iron artifacts in here. Amazing. So all that there is uh, clumps of uh, rust. Is it, there are some interesting pieces of rust, I'll give you that. Anyway, come look at this piece, tell me what you think. Yeah, all it is is, uh, is like a hinge, with a hinge, with a hinge, with a hinge, and obviously it went around something, like multiple hinges. Yeah. Never seen anything like that before. I wonder what that was used for. Clamping something tight, perhaps, or... God knows. Yeah, a bit more of it there, look. Where scrap comes to die. Well, amongst all this iron and steel, rusting away, I did actually find a piece of aged, interesting steel, look. It's actually a fork. The old style forks, probably possibly Georgian. In fact, it probably is most likely Georgian, but it's broken. 
you know, this is what would have been used around a nice dining table, cutting into the meat, holding it still. It'd be like how you carve meat these days, you've got a two prong fork. Well, this is the, the, the very first one of that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And would have looked something like this. Nice bone handle. But both those edges would have been straight. Hello. What do you think of my fork, eh? What do you think of my fork? <laughs> there we go. You think this is a fork for cat food, don't you? Interesting brick. Adelaide Park Brick Company, Birmingham. Yeah. There with a name on it, Morris Limited Patent. Herbert, Herbert Morris Limited. I wonder what they were. Cool. I'm not gonna lift that. I mean, I'm hoping it's not a landmine. Uh, yeah, we'll do a bit of quick research on Herbert and Morris. Well, I said this was quite the industrial area and this find proves that. Herbert Morris lived between 1864 and 1931 and went from a pulley block salesman to an incredibly successful crane and pulley manufacturer. His company built all manner of lifting devices like overhead runways and various conveyors and pulleys that were sold across the world. No wonder it looked so heavy if it was this object lying beneath the mud. Well, if you've never been to the Doctrine's Museum, you should, uh, you should check it out. And I think we might have found something they could put in their museum. Come and have a look. Now, the tide's almost going to cover it, but you get the idea, look. It's a very cool little cart with sort of four wheels in a different formation than you'd, you'd normally see. I think it's a bit too buried to lift it at the moment. It probably weighs a lot. But still, it's a pretty cool thing, and they've got loads of examples of this sort of thing in the Dockling Museum. Why don't we go to the Dockling Museum anyway and have a look around? A bead! Hey, hey, nice little glass bead there. Well, got myself a little bit of luck in the muck, been detected, and I found a very unusual, could be a coin, thought it was a button at first, could be silver, could be really old, I don't know what it is, another mystery thing, come and take a look. I don't know if it's silver, but it's something, like, I thought it was a button at first, like a decorated button. It's like a double-headed eagle or something there. It could be, it could be, no, it can't be Roman. I don't know, it could just be I don't know, I've got no idea. I can speculate till the cows come home. It's like a shield on that side. I hope it's something old. It's got the feel about something old, but um, yeah, we'll do some research on this one and check out what it is. I'm excited. It's like a cool old thing. That's as far as I know. Probably a token, I'm thinking. But it's got a silver feel about it. So um, yeah, one to research. Happy days. <laughs> Wow, when I think I've found my best token. First for me, get in. That is a very good find. Oh, wow, chuff with that. One like this comes along. Most tokens that I find date between 1500 and 1800 AD, but this one is centuries earlier, dating to the 12 to 1400s. This token is made from a pewter alloy, which is why it survived so well. Early tokens of this day are surprisingly better designed than their later counterparts. This is due to their use, which is still kind of vague, but as we understand it, tokens were not really used as currency to begin with, but used as a return ticket for holy trips taken by pilgrims visiting sites far away such as Canterbury, Glastonbury and Winchester. The wonderful double-headed eagle is a very early symbol and probably signifies the Holy Roman Church. 
Other tokens of this age, usually found on the Thames foreshore, have very detailed designs depicting pilgrims with little bags and other heraldic designs. On the reverse is a shield and something you might have seen a knight holding. Again, the craftsmanship is so good, which could be attributed to the church commissioning them in order to sell them and make a profit on the pilgrimages. Later on, tokens became very popular as currency and many were produced very often by any old Joe, hence their reduction in regularity and quality. This one I'll be recording with the Museum of London. But stick around because later on I'll be visiting the Docklands Museum and I'll give you my 10 minute tour. Find it, Rob. Can you spot it? Where is it? Can you see it? <laughs> it is just there. Oh. Have a little scrape, and that popped up. See what that is? I think it's a very battered. You know the double heart, the, yeah. um, Catherine. Catherine. Um, oh, I can't remember that. Is it Charles? Charles II and Catherine of. Braganza, Braganza, yeah, yeah, the marriage of. I can't believe you missed that though. Oh, I didn't miss it. <laughs> You've been walking around the foreshore <laughs> and you found it. Nice little find, man. Yeah, we're doing all right. Nice little finds. Fortunately, you've seen better days, but yeah, you see two little hearts there below there. Might clean up. Incredibly, this pewter button is a 350 year old royal souvenir. A bit like how mugs and plates are made for modern royal weddings, in the 1600s, cufflinks and buttons were a way to show your support. In this case, it was the marriage between King Charles II to Catherine of Braganza in 1662. This button is so old, it may have been worn during the panic of the Great Fire of London in 1666. Wow, what an incredible piece of history. Imagine if it could speak. Alright guys, let's do a little spot to find. It's quite a tricky one. So pause the screen and uh, we'll zoom in in a second and we can see what it is. Okay, have you found it? It is. This little fella right there. How cool is that? Very tiny. It's like a little uh, stud. Collar stud perhaps for shirt. Maybe a cuff link, but it's got a beautiful little stone in there. Onyx or something, I'm not sure. Anybody know what that stone is in there? Very nice. Imagine the gentleman who wore that back in the day. Probably Georgian, I'm thinking. Very nice. Well, that's the size of a normal pin now. Look at that whopper. Beautiful, nice Tudor pin. A big daddy, just like Rob. Oh, some little scrape around here, only lightly, of course. And this little thing pops up, just there, look. Oh, cool, 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 cool. It's a uh, little navel button. <clears throat> Beautiful. Nice fouled anchor there and a crown, probably Victorian. That clean up nicely. Oh, I do love an anchor on the button. Cool. Handsome, that. Probably popped off his uh, jacket there, look. If only we could go back to the time when it came off. What tussle was he getting in? Or was he just doing his laundry? Well, I've just spotted this little gem here. Ah, beautiful little green paste stone. Yeah, very nice. Pretty come out of a Georgian cuffling, not, not dissimilar to one we found earlier. Isn't that pretty? Bit river worn. Ah, that's what we like, and though. Beautiful colour. Look at that. Lovely turquoise paste stone. 
Let's have a little sit down, bless him. It's been hard. It's been hard night, isn't it, mate? Yeah. <clears throat> been heavy one. And uh, right where he's sitting, there's a little button that he uh, he left for me. Yeah. Yeah. Left it for me. Oh, it's stuck in there. That's it. Oh, it's proper. It's proper in there. I don't want to ruin it. We'll try and get a, a trail under it and pop it out. There we go. She's free. Good news. What do you reckon then, Rob? Military Sur service button. General service. I'm going to go for. I'll go for a naval button just because I think I found one earlier. Oh, we're going to tell we very easily, are we? Right, something for later. Oh, is it? I think it is a naval button. Uh -oh. There we go. Beautiful. Do you want that? As soon as it's right by your feet. Well, you could have those two two the bricks that are by you. I know, we've got Tudor Brick, one there, and one there, look. But they really are in the uh, hard stuff, and I don't have the uh, impetus to dig those out today. Yeah. I think it's very similar to the one I found earlier, so let's compare it. That is... Very close, very isn't close. they? Very close. Unless um, that could be a police one, with a police. Could be, yeah, good shout. Yeah, your one's much better, Nick. Once it's been a, have a little zap, that'll look beautiful. Yeah. Cool. Not a bad swap, two Tudor bricks. <laughs> <laughs> what else about that then? Lovely little linky. Oh, it's only half. Oh, what a shame. Oh, they're giving a little um, shadow box or something. So, yeah, I'll take that. Shame it's not complete, but there we go. Well, guys, look at all these bones. Sometimes there's some cool things. We're stuck in all these bones. Yeah. Interesting tile thing, and I think I'll see something over here. You see it? Here it is. Cool old domino, or what? Oh, I found the back of one of these the other day. And that's a complete one. Oh, nice. Looks like that's bone as well. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, well, if there's anything else in this old bone collection. Bit of old shoe. There's the old bone, rag and bone. If you see something, shout. Well, just dug this up. It's in the black stuff. Looks like an old pocket watch. And that's where you used to have the, uh, the old winders and then later on they become integrated into the actual watch itself. So this is an earlier one. I'm showing that's all that's left of it really. It'd be nice to find one with the glass in it and the back in it. I did find the back of one recently, so you know, we're getting there bit by bit. I'm gonna make a patchwork pocket watch. <laughs> well, just seen this. That's nice, isn't it? Pretty. Pretty. <clears throat> this jet, yeah, this like Victorian little jet button. Or is it glass? Well, tap on your teeth and find out. Glass. Ooh. Is jet softer then? I don't know. It's hard, isn't it? It's not plastic anyway. It tastes of sand. <laughs> <clears throat> well, being in the Thames, it could have tasted a lot worse. Nice. That's pretty though. Well, mud lovers, I'm outside the Docklands Museum here in Canary Wharf in the financial district. It's where the old meets the new. There's lots of treasures there inside showing the history of the docks in and around London. And this is going to be my 10 minute tour. So strap in tight, let's get inside out of the gloomy weather and show you what treasures are hidden inside. The Museum of London Docklands is the little sister, if you will, to the big Museum of London. It opened in 2003 in a grade one listed Georgian warehouse, originally built in 1802, designed for storing sugar and focuses on the history of the River Thames, the docks and the expansion of the Port of London and includes the history of the connection to the Atlantic slave trade. 
I began on the top floor to search out one of my objectives. Let's see if I can find the same wagon that I found in the mud earlier today. This is cool. Straight in with the artifacts. This meat trolley dating to 1901, which was used for lamb carcasses, is close to my one. And this trolley was used for transporting tea chests. I have a couple of these old tea chests myself that I now use as a recycling bin. These are sugar cask trucks dating to the 1800s and were found buried close to the museum. I'll have to keep looking because despite being similar, the wheels are in a different formation. Stick around to see if I find one that matches the one that I found. In the meantime, we can purr over things like these meat hooks, of which I found similar. Not to brag, you understand. This is my one that I've never bothered to really clean. Hey Daisy. Still got a little bit of leather wrapped around there, probably to stop your fingers from getting sore, perhaps. I'm worried if I clean it, I might break it. This is Nelly. Should we hook you? Mm, careful. Are you hooked on my larking videos? <laughs> And caulking tools like these were used to make boats watertight by hammering in rope with pitch tar into the gaps in the wood. This padlock is one of many at the museum, which us mudlarks find and often have names and addresses of the businesses or barges that they belong to. My favorite part on this floor is the street you can feel like you're stepping back in time as you peer through houses and offices via their windows. More of these coming up later. Another cool artifact was this chain found at Execution Dock in Wapping, found dredging in 1920. It is thought to have been used in the 1700s to secure the bodies of pirates to a stake in the river for three tides, just like how Captain Kidd was finally caught and executed. We then learn about the horrific slave trade and again artifacts such as manilas which were copper currency and trade beads that we often find being the highlight. The site of the museum is a sugar warehouse don't forget so it's quite fitting that they educate people on the wrongdoings of our past. As we move on, we see uniforms and the cutlasses that belong to the first police force. The riches of the Thames tempted thieves, con men and worse, which is evident by that forged coin I found earlier. You can learn about how London was the largest whaling port in the world for a short while. Not something to be proud of, but the oil production was big business. Now for more immersive fun as we walk the streets of old London, where we visit the shops that any sailor will be happy to frequent in pursuit of items needed for their day-to-day -day work and pleasure. Vendors sold exotic products brought back from abroad, such as these huge conch shells, of which I found similar. Conch shell, really happy with that. Beautiful. As we walk around, there are various rooms kitted out with nautical accessories and also lodgings with clay pipes and old bottles ready for consumption. Ah, and there's the pub. Time for a well-earned ale, methinks. Or... <laughs> service round is terrible. Nice old tankards too. And it reminds me of the one that I found a little while ago. However, mine was a lot older. If you're enjoying this mud lovers, please don't forget to subscribe, give it a like and tap that notification bell so you never miss another mud venture. But we're not finished yet. There's still plenty more monkeying around. 
because I know you came out a long way to see this. <laughs> As we move on, we see the ship's right tools, old paintings of the centuries of shipbuilding and breaking of thousands of vessels on the Thames. As mudlarks, we find the tools that we used and many other personal effects that were dropped or lost by our descendants in the mud that was so putrid it made Parliament pass an act to clean up the great stink because their offices ended up reeking so badly. These artifacts look just like medieval pilgrim badges, but are actually replicas known as Billy and Charlie's. The story goes, back in 1857, London's antiquarians watched closely as the digging of new engineering works at Shabwell Dock took place. Two opportunistic labourers called William Smith and Charles Eaton, who helped dig the dock, made fake badges and figures to sell to the so-called experts who actually believed them for a number of years before finally being caught. What an interesting and amazing story. I'd love to find one of these on the Thames one day. We move through more impressive displays of cooperage, that's barrel making. And bottle manufacturing. And of course, customs and excise. I have found nice brass buttons from the customs uniforms that once looked after the imports from the Thames. And I was thrilled to see a PLA, Port of London Authority, mug, probably dating to the 30s or 40s, of which I have the exact same one. Ha <laughs> ha! As we come to the later stages of the museum, I saw more trolleys, but none with the same diamond wheel formation as mine. As far as I can tell, this is quite a rare type of trolley or car, if it's even that. Some examples online show that trolleys with this diamond formation are designed this way in order to turn them easily. However, the one I left upside down doesn't have that pivoting front and back wheel, so goodness knows what it was used for. But I'm thinking I would love to go back and save it, and I'd love to donate it to the Docklands Museum if they'd want it. What do you think I should do? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. At the very least, it would be an amazing coffee table. But as they say in Jaws, we're going to need a bigger boat to get it out of there. As we come to the end of the tour, we can see the effects that World War II had on the Thames. And once more, I can relate to this, having had grandparents that served and finding artifacts such as bomb parts, hand grenades, ammunition, cap badges, and uniform buttons are plenty. We shall remember them. And finally, we are shown how the East End and the docks, as they once were, are now gone and replaced with housing, factories or office buildings. But the East Enders didn't go out without a fight. But without the cargo and shipping coming into London with all those goods, their way of life inevitably faded away. And the barges and boats were replaced with massive containerization in the form of cargo shipping in the superports like that at Tilbury. There's so much more to see, hear and touch in the Docklands Museum that I highly recommend you visit if you're ever in London. If you'd like to see the time that I took some Roman shoes to the Museum of London, click this thumbnail and I'll also give you a little tour. So thanks for watching mud lovers, drop a like, watch this next video and I'll see you on the next mud venture.